Welcome to our channel. Civil Engineering Basics. For more videos please subscribe, Civil Engineering Basics. Hello friends. In this video we will discuss the steel structure subject. Multiple choice questions with answers and with details. In which position column and in restraint condition, the answer is option C, end of column is not free to change its position. In the diagram, you can easily see that when end of column is not free to change its position either rotationally or directionally, that position of column is called rest ride condition of column. Effective length of a column is the length between the points of zero moments. You can see the various columns with different end conditions and for that its effective lengths are different as shown. The effective length of a column, L, held in position at both ends but no restrained in direction, is equal to L. As shown in diagram, A, when column is no restrained in direction at both ends then its effective length is equal to its original length. Slenderness ratio of a compression member is the ratio of effective length of the compression member to the radius of gyration of that member. The slenderness ratio of a single angle single strut should be less than 180. The Euler's formula for columns is valid for small slenderness ratio. You can see the Euler's formula for critical load. Rankin, Gordon formula for buckling load is adopted for column having slenderness ratio more than 120 and less than 200. And as you know slenderness ratio of a compression member is the ratio of effective length of the compression member to the radius of gyration of that member. In order to determine the allowable stress in axial compression, Bureau of Indian Standards, BIS, has adopted, secant formula. Which of the following is a best compression member section? Tubular section is a best compression member section. You can see tubular section in below image. A tubular section is most efficient and economical for the column free to buckle in any direction. The radius of gyration R for the tubular section in all the directions remains same. The tubular section has high local buckling strength. The tubular sections are suitable for medium loads. The single angle sections are used for small trusses and bracing. Single plane trusses. Trusses having gusset plates in one plane. All of the above. In roof trusses, the most frequent used section is two angle sections placed back to back. You can see the two angle section placed back to back in the diagram shown. Allowable working stress for struts may be assumed as 60 Newton per mm square. The buckling load in a steel column is related to the length of column. According to IS, 81984, Lacing bars should resist a transverse shear equal to 2.5% of the axial load in the member. Slenderness ratio of the lacing bar for compression member should not exceed 145. The battening is preferred when the column is axially loaded and Space between the two main components is not very large. The batten plates used to connect the components of built-up column are designed to resist longitudinal shear. The perforated cover plates are particularly suitable for a built-up box section consisting of four angle sections. 
you can see the four angle build up section covered with perforated cover plates and image. The number of batten plates should be such that it divides the column longitudinally in at least three parts. It means that the batten's plates are provided such a way that it will divide column longitudinally in at least three parts. An eccentrically loaded column is subjected to bending stress and direct stress. If A is the cross-sectional area of an eccentrically loaded column and Z is the section modulus, then bending factor is equal to A slash Z. A joint in length of a column is known as column splice. Column splice is a joint in length in column, you can see the column splice in diagram given. Allowable working stress in compression in the column splice plates may be taken as 125 newton per mm square. Which means in column splice plate, allowable working stress in compression is 125 newton per mm square. The width of bearing plate is equal to the width of flange of column. It means that bearing plate is provided as per the width of flange and equal to the width of flange of column. In a grillage footing, the maximum bending moment occurs at the center of beam. You can see the image of grillage footing. A steel wire when used as a tie requires nominally pre-stressing. The net sectional area of a tension member is equal to gross sectional area minus the maximum deduction for rivets holes. Which of following is not a tension member? Boom is not a tension member. Cable, bar, and tie all are tension members. In a tension member, when one or more than one rivet hole is off the line, then the failure of plate depends upon Diameter of rivet hole Pitch of rivets Gauge of rivets All the factors depends on failure of plate In combined footing, the shape for the base of footing should be rectangular to support two equal column loads. You can see the diagram of combined footing with rectangular base. You can see longitudinal section and plan for rectangular combined footing. Thank you so much for viewing this video. For more video on civil engineering subscribe my channel. Civil Engineering Basics